Welcome back, Lemon Strikers. How are you guys? Now, I know everything looks different from how it used to be. I used to have the bunk bed and everything, but all that is gone now. Uh, everything is new, everything's updated, even the LED lights are new, the chair is new, the desk is new, that the bed's new. Um, trying to think of anything else is new. <laughs> My hair is new. Um, but yeah, what happened uh, before everything, um, it took a really, really sharp turn. And I really wasn't expecting it. I really wasn't. And I really was hoping it wouldn't happen to me. But it did. So now that everything is kind of settling down with my schedule um and i'm getting into the i'm getting into the more easier stage of what i'm going through now now, now, now that i'm getting to the easier stage of it i can i think i'm ready to finally announce it on my youtube channel if you follow me on my instagram you would know bef way beforehand because i posted it i posted about it when like probably a month in um, but it happened in May and it's October today. So about roughly six months. It happened. It happened. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm out of lost words. I, ha <laughs> I had a whole speech of what I wanted to say in this video. Now it's just gone. Um, yeah, so without further ado, let's not waste any time. Let's not be around the bush about it and let's get into it so when may came around it was any normal month you know it was like whatever school had just been let out early due to the virus which sucked but hey no more school you know i'm happy about it <laughs> but then i started getting like a really bad headache and i'm just like oh okay i'll just slip it off and you know the next day will be, uh, I'll be fine, you know. That didn't happen, so I just kept sleeping and trying to get rid of my headache, but nothing worked. And then I think like a week or two in of me having that headache, um, I tried eating, or no, I was eating. Sorry, I, I was eating dirt the whole time, but I I ate, and then I couldn't keep down the food like I am supposed to. It wouldn't stay down, and it would come back up. I'm sorry if you're eating this. If, if, if you're eating while watching this, sorry. Uh, yeah, I just really couldn't hold down food. Nothing solid. So we tried soup, and that seemed to work just fine. Oh, and that's me, too. Anyway, back to the topic. Uh, yeah, soup was the only thing that I could keep down in my stomach. So I just had a soup. And then I just kept eating soup, soup, soup. That's pretty much all I had. And then May 14th comes around. And I was assigned some chores to do. I was like, all right, fine, whatever, you know. Nothing I, I'm not used to, you know. So I'm like probably almost halfway, or not halfway, like 45% almost done with it. And then I started to feel not myself you know if you know what i mean this light makes me look pale uh but i knew something was off like i didn't feel right but i didn't give it a second thought so i'm trying to vacuum and uh i couldn't seem to comprehend of putting the thing back in the vacuum where we clean out the dust like just couldn't do it so I called my dad, I was like, hey, um, I may not be able to do the walking because he wanted me to walk every day, or not every day, at least to walk, uh, because he, he, he thought that I wasn't going outside enough, which I really wasn't. I wasn't going outside, I was just staying in the room playing video games. Uh, I told him that I'm not, I might not be able to walk because I was assigned some chores. And uh, he's like, oh, um, just do half the chores. Or, or, you know, get what you can done and then go for a walk and then, you know, 
have the rest done. It's okay if you don't, you know, finish it off. Or at least that's what I remember from that day. It was very, it's not, it's very uh, vague in my memory. Um, so I was like, all right. So I hung, hung up. I tried to get the the thing back in the vacuum. I don't know what it's called. Sorry. Um, but just I kept trying with no success. And um, I think I ended up calling on my dad again because I told him something about the TV, my, my TV in my room, that it, um, like, the TV wouldn't work or something like that. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. And uh, he's like, what? And I was like, the TV won't work. And he tried, he tried to, he tried to, get me to explain what was happening because apparently I wasn't giving him like enough things to go on. So I tell him more or at least try to and then he was like turn on the TV or I finally turned on the TV. I always guess I was hitting the wrong button. Um, and then I think I called him again for the third time. I'm not really too sure. It was, again, it's very, very chopped up in my, in my mind, so I apologize if there's certain parts missing of this of that day. That's, I'm just going off by memory. That's what I'm really going off right now. And then he was telling me to answer your phone th through the cameras because we have a whole security, uh, we have security cameras around the house, and motion sensors, motion sensors, and, uh, detect devices that detect glass breaking so um he was talking to me through the cameras he was like um please pick up your phone pick up your phone and he would call me and i would look at my phone like i'm like not i don't know how to, like i'm acting like i don't know how to my phone i don't even know how my phone worked at that time you know because something traumatic was happening and uh He's like, if this is a joke, I'm going to be very pissed, but I'm coming home. I'm like, and I was repeating the same word over and over again. Same sentence, sorry. It, the sentence was either I did or didn't. That was the sentence I was repeating. And I don't, I don't remember, I don't remember repeating that word. Um, and then my dad ended up calling my stepmom to come home from work because she only lived she works at like a, two blocks away I was like hey I think something's wrong with our son please come home please get home and see if he's okay so that's what she does and I'm in my room I'm like on the little sofa thing on my um, um, where I had the thing if you guys know what I'm talking about then you know um, I'm just laying there and then I hear her come home and I just knew, or I, I, I thought like, oh, I might get, I might get yelled at because I didn't finish the chores. So I was walking and apparently it looked like that I forgot how to walk. Like I was just like, it looked like I was a new, a new, new infant pretty much walk, learning how to walk. Um, so she pretty much is like, what the hell? So she was like, uh, take a shower and then we'll go to the emergency room, or not the emergency room, sorry, uh, urgent care to see what, what's wrong with you. I was like, all right. So in my mind, now this is the part I remember. In my mind, I'm going into the, to the bathroom in the hallway. But in reality, I'm going outside to the backyard. And she goes, what are you doing? And then in my mind, I'm going, I'm taking a shower. As, in my mind, I'm in, the sh in my bathroom as I'm saying those words. And uh, she's like, no. So she pulls me from where I was and puts me in the bathroom. And then I don't remember taking a shower that day. I don't know if I did. Mm. Um, but um, she's like, you know what? Don't, don't, uh, just, just get dressed and I'll take you. I was like, all right. So I couldn't, and I had trouble putting on my shoes I put the left one on the right one and the right one on the left one. Um, and then we left. Alright, she helped me fix it, sorry. And then we left. 
my dad met us at urgent care and I was coming in and out like I knew what was happening and then a second later I was like what's going on you know and then my dad tried to open my door to my, the side of my door he, t he tried to oh, sorry he tried to open it I was like what the hell and so I kept trying to close the door he finally gets it open and he's like what are you doing I'm like oh sorry I didn't know it was you so uh we get into urgent care uh and we get pulled in the back the nurse takes my my blood pressure she asks me uh do you know where you go to school I, I couldn't answer that do you know who the president is couldn't answer that um yeah so i pretty much couldn't answer anything so we get we get in a room and then the doctor came and he asked the same question i wasn't able to reply because apparently i forgot or didn't didn't, didn't or didn't know um then he's like all right he he, put, he, pulls, he goes like this he goes like this and he says squeeze my fingers it's like all right cool so I go to squeeze his fingers, but in in my mind I'm squeezing his fingers, but in reality my hands are below his fingers. I'm squeezing, and uh, he's like, "No, grab onto my fingers," and I go, "I am," and he he was like, he t talks to my dad. He goes, uh, "Has he taken any drugs, or is he on drugs?" He goes, "No," and then I know I'm not on drugs. I never take drugs, never in my life. I would never take drugs. Uh, he's like, yeah, uh, he's, he, he, the urgent care pretty much thought I was on drugs, pretty much, just to sum it up. My dad didn't believe it. He knows I'm not on drugs. He knows I never take drugs. He knows I will never take drugs. Um, so he's like, the doctor was like, I think what you need to do is to go either to what was that one hospital called? I don't remember what it's called. Uh, either go to that hospital or this hospital. I don't remember the hospital. Sorry. I had my six months ago. Okay, leave me alone. Uh, so they're like, all right. So they took me to the hospital. And as we were lining in to sign up, sign in, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I look at them and I go, I want a donut. <laughs> Completely disregarding everything that just happened today. And then... I w the reply or response I got was, okay, after this, we'll get you a donut. And I'm, and I'm just sitting there, or just standing there, just like, I'm going to get the donut. Everything's going to be amazing. This is going to be a great day. You know, forgetting the whole reason why I'm there. Um, so, we get, so we get to the front, we sign in, and they have us go into the waiting room, room which is seats. Um, so we get called, or I get called, and, uh, they check my blood pressure, like, same thing as the urgent care did, they take blood, but they had the little thing that, that pokes you and has blood coming out of your finger, yeah, they, they did that to me, um, and then, they had, they did a, a CAT scan on me, or a CAT scan, how you pronounce it, one of those two? Um, and I was just sitting, laying there, just, I want a donut. I just kept thinking about that donut. And then the, a couple, I think like two, an hour or two went by or so. I don't remember how long. Because uh, I didn't have my phone on me. My phone was in the car, I believe. Either in the car or at home. Um, then they called my dad. I was like, okay, why not? If it's something about me, why not, you know, have me be there? But I was like, whatever, you know, if it's personal, it's personal. So I'm, I'm continuing to watch TV, watching Big Bang Theory, I believe, or Family Guy, one of those two. Um, so it takes him a while, and he gets back in. He's laying in the bed next to me. And me and him just start talking, me and him start cracking jokes. 
like I, I was acting pretty normal, you know. And then they're like, um, they already told. They came in my room and told me, told me and dad, that he needs to see a specialist because we don't have what he needs. We can't treat him how he needs to be treated. I'm just like, I'm just laying there. I'm like, I don't know if I should take that as an insult or what. But I was like, whatever. And um, so they were telling me on where I'm going, how I'm getting there. And by pretty much the estimate time I'm arriving there. I was being flown. I flew in a helicopter. It was going to take me roughly two hours. And I was being flown to Valley Children's, Valley Children's Hospital. And I was like, all right, as long as dad can come, you know, I'm, I'm fine. So hours went by. It was like 7, 8 p.m. They were like, all right, you ready? I was like, yeah. And come to find out that my dad can't go on the helicopter with me. I was pretty bummed out. Honestly, I wanted him to go with me, but they couldn't. Apparently, there wasn't enough space, I believe. Uh, so I can't lay in the bed that they provided me with. And they scroll me out to the helipad again in the thing, and I have my mask on, the the red mask. I don't know if you get, I don't know if you guys saw it, seen it. Sorry. And uh, while I'm getting in there, they wrap around the the blood pressure thing on my arm, and they put the headset on me where I can hear ev whatever what they're talking about. I was like, okay, I don't need this, but I'll take it, I guess. So, the co-pilot asks me if uh if i'm all right i respond with yes i guess she couldn't hear me because my mask um i was like she's like oh i can't hear you i think your mask covering it up i was like all right so i didn't respond to anything they said to me no they didn't they didn't ask me anything i just didn't respond um yeah but we got there in about an hour and 30 minutes and then i get to the room, my room. I was being held the first a week and a half, maybe. Um, I was being held in the ICU. It's an ICU means intensive care unit. I was being held there, and uh, that's where I pretty much stayed for like a week, maybe. And I had a catheter placed in my leg, my right leg, which sucked because I couldn't walk, or I could walk, but I just had a limp. Um, but th that's when they told me that, uh, no, no, sorry, that's before the catheter. This is, yes, this is before the uh, catheter that happened. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Um, before the, the, before they placed a catheter in my leg, they said, they told me straight up that you're, that I have, uh, cancer, also known as leukemia. Or ALL. I think that's how I pronounce it. And honestly, that day sucked. Honestly, um, it sucked. It it was just one of the worst days of my life. But you know, and they told me and they took blood from me as well, and they told me that his white blood cells are off. His white blood cells are off the charts. Off the charts. So what they had to do was they cleaned my blood out. They took blood out of me. They cleaned it in this little bag thingy and they put it back in. Because apparently, what, from what I was told, uh, good uh, blood blood lasts 10 minutes out of the body. And then if it goes back in, or uh, if it doesn't go back in the body within 10 minutes, then it's no good. Or at least that's what I remember being told. Um, so I got my blood cleaned. And then the catheter happened. And then there was this guy who came every other day, maybe. And he wanted to walk. Walk with me. Sorry, I'm, I'm giving burps because I just ate not so long ago. Uh, I was like, yeah, sure. So I, I tried my best to get out of bed. It kind of hurt to, to walk because I'm just limping because I had something placed in my leg that's never there. So, yeah, this time, and then the time came for the catheter to be, to be removed. 
to my leg. So I was like, all right. So they take the stitches out and they pull the catheter out. And honestly, that hurt. That it was like a like probably that long, maybe. It was like a size of a long, thin drinking straw, pretty much. Um, that hurt. I literally had to hold on my dad's hand. That's how bad it hurt. He was there and he saw everything. He was like, "Oh, damn! I bet that hurt." I was like, "Yeah, you're telling me." But um. They removed me out of the intensive care unit. I'm back on the ground because there's levels to the hospital. It's an intensive care unit where, like the where I used to be, like the severe critical people are the, are held, and then the the ones who I don't know how to pronounce say this. Uh, yeah, but I was being held there. Uh, I got an M I M I T scan, I believe it was. That was horrible. I was scared. It was my first time doing it. Uh, I was shaking. I kept complaining. I couldn't stand still. None of that. The guy was like, the guy was even like, I hope I don't have to do this again. Honestly, I don't blame you. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do it with me again. But, um, yeah. Um, and then I was receiving, I believe I was receiving, receiving chemo as well. I don't remember. I don't remember when I started receiving chemo. Um, but I was there from May 14th to June 16th, maybe. So, like, a little over a month. I was released June 16th, I believe. And I had a pick line in, the, in here as well, right here. And taking that out, it sucked as well, but it wasn't as bad as the catheter was. The catheter was way worse. So I left. Came. I finally was able to see my family again. Um, I was able to come back home. And uh, honestly, I it hurt. It hurt to walk properly because I'm I'm usually always in bed when I was at the hospital. So it like kind of hurt to walk. I didn't feel good in, to walk. And then my brain was just hurting, 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 hurting. Uh, the reason that being was, is because I had a seizure. I forgot to mention that as well, but I had a seizure. Um, but yeah, I, I was riding with my grandparents. They took me home. Um, the whole cover that I just left because that's what I was doing in the hospital. Um, when we got home, I was laying on the couch because it hurt to be up it hit my head and being on my side or laying down in any way felt better to me so that's what I did when I got home and I believe we had pizza when, when, I, came, when I came home yeah um, that's the day I could have died as well May 14th was the day I could have died honestly I'm glad I didn't die because I have a lot more to live for. And, uh, I know it would have sucked for my family if I had gone. But I'm gonna hold out your tears. Uh, Alright, um, so I guess my mom also got wind of this when I was in the ICU. She started crying as well. My brother found out as well. My sister and my brother, my, both my sisters, uh, I believe found out via my mom. And at that point, I uh, when I was first released from the hospital, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to release this out into the public yet. I didn't really feel comfortable sharing this yet. But, you know, can't go get always what I want, you know, which is fine, you know. I didn't really mind, but um, and then I started going back every week to get either blood transfusion or uh, yeah, blood transfusion or chemo. Chemo, 
right? Yeah, it was either yeah, blood or, or milk. And I was going in and out, in and out, in and out. And then I believe it was August, I believe. Sometime August is when I got, or I believe it was August, I'm not sure. Is when I got the cat, not the catheter, sorry. The Metaport placed in my chest. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Metaport is another way to receive your treatment. It's another way to receive your fluids or your, uh, or, or sedu you seduct you, you know, put you to sleep, some night night juice. Um, yeah, so it's in my left, left side of my chest. Um, and when I first got it and I woke up for, for in the recovery room, I tried to move my left, my left hand, left arm, sorry, and it just hurt. It hurt so bad. And I remember trying, I uh, woke up and I immediately have to pee. <laughs> I had to pee. So my dad comes in and I tell him, hey dad, He's like what? I gotta pee. So he hands me the cup, the not the cup, the plastic thing that I was peeing, because they didn't need to measure how much you pee. I, I don't know why. Don't ask me. Um, yeah, they give me one of the. He gives me one of that, and then obviously I do my business and the thing. And apparently I almost filled it up. That's how badly I had to pee. Okay, don't judge me. Uh, and then it was like. They wanted me to stay over the weekend to observe me, to make sure that I didn't have any reactions to the metaphor being placed on my chest. So I was like, "All right." So I stay for a long, for as long as as long as as long as they need me, and uh, I get to leave. Uh, when they first access my port, it was weird. I'm not used to having a needle on my chest and out of my chest. But, yeah. And then, we would go back. You know, we were going every other week to receive the same thing. Chemo or, or just blood transfusion. And I'd have, I'd have to wear the cream that numbs the area. So I don't feel it as much as, as I would if I didn't have the cream. And, um... Yeah, so they were like, all right, we need you for this emission and that emission and this emission. I was like, all right, whenever you need, whenever you need to see me, I'm ready. So I was, for a while, I was going back for an admission every other week. I was staying there for Monday from, one from Monday, or from, sorry, Friday to Monday. Yeah. And I was receiving chemo those four days. It was no big deal to me, you know. And then... I started receiving AROC, I believe. I'm sorry if the story's out of order. I'm, a lot has happened. Trust me. Um, and then I stopped taking AROC. And then methotrexate. Now that messed me over. Which was recent. Um, methotrexate is another form of chemo but it's more has a more of a punch to it you know um so i got that the first time it took me like four like three to four days to clear it and and uh, the next time it took me a lo little longer to clear it and then the next time three to four days and then the last time three to four days but i was i would also receive side effects Side effects including me losing feeling in my left arm or like a little tingling sensation. And then my left leg would go numb and I would lose balance in my leg and potentially fall, which I did fall last time. It was the last time I received it. Or second, second to last time I received it. And I was rushed to the emergency room and they did a MRT scan on me again. I was calm this time. Oh, actually, I freaked out before, and then I was calm during it, and I fell asleep. That's how calm I was. And, um, yeah, they told us that, yeah, it was a methotrexate side effects. There is no possible chance 
side. He had like a mini stroke or anything, so he's good. And you, you guys are ready. You guys are. You guys have a choice. Either you can leave, or you can stay. I was like, if we can leave, and I'm gone. So we left. We got food. Cause I was a hungry boy. I haven't, I haven't eaten anything that day. All right. Well, yeah. I was I was in the middle of breakfast, but then I went to the bathroom. Fell. Um. And then I received my last mental check date dose. Um, and I had side effects, but nothing, not, it wasn't me falling, that's for sure. Um, I would occasionally, not, not occasionally, it sounds like I'm doing it recently. Uh, I would, <laughs> by mistake, I would take the wrong pills on the wrong day. So that might have what also caused it, but we're not 100% sure. Cause I have pills to take every seven. Well, now it well it used to be in from nine a.m. and then I would take it take certain pills at nine nine a.m. and then I take pills at nine p.m. and then I was it. And then I also take my blood pressure before I take the pills. I take the blood pressure, and then pills and then blood pressure. So yeah, now I'm gonna be receiving another dose of Eresy. And also, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be receiving um, radiation treatment, which is like another form of chemotherapy. So I might lose more hair than I already have now. I know I look different with short hair. I know I have a big forehead. Leave me alone. Um, I need to stop using jokes as a way to cope with sad things. Um, yeah, honestly, May. 14th was a day I could have been gone and the doctor even told told my dad I believe it was my dad I believe he was the one who told that I was on my deathbed do you know how much that scared me and do you know how like that put me down because I felt like he didn't he or she did not have that much faith in me but I fought it and I beat it I'm now in rem I'm now in remission. Um, I get the uh, procedures done, which is the lumbar puncture where they put a needle on my back and put me to sleep. And then they also do the peg shots, which is two injections in your leg muscles. Um, I experienced that when I was awake for the first time. That sucked. <laughs> um, yeah, I won't have to go back until probably the end of November. No, I'm going back Wednesday. Sorry. So tomorrow is when you're seeing, or Tuesday is when you're seeing this. Right now it's Monday. All right, so tomorrow you're seeing this, or Tuesday you're seeing this, and then the next uh, Wednesday I'm, I'm going back. Um, yeah. This is a lot for me, you know? It's really a lot. Honestly, I didn't really expect for this to happen, but you gotta expect the unexpected. And that's one thing I didn't see coming but now I see it could could clearly uh, just today or Monday sorry I during class during virtual tutoring uh, I had to go do a, a COVID swab done which is when they stick a, a, a q-tip up your nose and go around your nose five times in each nostril and for oh my god the first time they did that it was with the long one. It wasn't the short one I and I, I get now. It's the long one where it goes eat inside your nose. Like it goes very far, goes very far in your nose. Oh, I would not want anyone to go through that. I would not want anyone to go through that. That sucked. But yeah, I'm reading a lot of you guys' messages as well. Your comments and your DMs to me. If you follow me on Instagram, thank you guys so much. Your support means the absolute world to me. I can't stress this enough. Even family members from my stepmom's side, my dad's side, my mom's side are reaching out to me and saying, I hope you feel better. I know you're going to beat this. You're a fighter or something along those lines. And each comment or 
message I receive from one of you guys or whoever, it really means the world to me. Like, I could not have a better fan base and a better family than I do now. Like, I couldn't ask for anything more. Thank you guys. You really guys make you guys make me happy. I wouldn't trade you guys in for the world, especially my family. I wouldn't trade you guys. I wouldn't. You guys mean a lot to me, and thank you guys so much for sticking by me. And even though I'm a little tough to handle sometimes, <laughs> thank you guys for putting up with me, and thank you guys for for uh, taking me to the hospital and potentially saving my life. Thank you guys so much. I'm forever. And my family's debt and the hospital's debt. Um, yeah, in the hospital, I oh, and and at the hospital, I made some friends. Um, I made it. I made a friend with the PCT. Is the, that's the person who comes in every couple hours to check your blood pressure and your temperature. And yeah, I made friends with one of them. And I made. Well, that's the only person I made friends with that day. And I made more friends, but I don't remember which ones, which certain ones, you know? Um, I'm trying to remember if there's anything else I'm missing in the story. Uh, but yeah, back to when I met first was when I first was released to the hospital from the hospital. It was emotional. It really was. Um, I'm glad I got to see everyone. That I could see uh, my grandpa, my grandma, my aunt, just everyone. I'm glad. And uh, I'm out of words. I really am. Just thank you guys so much. You guys mean everything to me. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. I, I appreciate every every comment I get. I appreciate every comment I get. Every DM I get. Every phone call I get. I appreciate everything. I'm glad you guys are there. For, to look out for me and to make sure I am I am better even people from my school who I don't even talk to DM me or comment on my post saying that I know you're gonna beat this and I know you will stay strong and uh, and beat this so Thank you guys so much. I can't express this enough. Thank you. My voice is going really given. I'm sorry. But really, thank you guys so much. Ugh. Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry for crying. Sorry, I'm having a little moment right now. But I can't. I don't think there's enough words. To describe how grateful I am for every single one of you who wish me to get better and or wish me to be in remission. Thank you guys so much. You guys have a special place in my heart. And you guys are the real ones. Man, uh, Alright, I'm going to end this before I get too emotional and start crying my eyes out in front of the camera. Sorry. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and don't be afraid to text me if you want a feature, if you want, I don't know, just you, for if you want, simply just want to talk, like, if your day is going to hell, come talk to me, or talk to a trusted adult or a trusted friend, they are there to help you for a reason, um, I know I may not respond right away, but no, I'm trying my best to 
at least get to one of you. Or respond to your text. I mean, I'm going to find right away. I'm possibly doing something. Or taking my pills. Or doing school. Or procedure. Or whatever. But, no, I will get to you when I have the chance. And, uh, yeah. As I said, thank you guys so much for all your support. It really means a lot. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. And with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And that was pre pretty much depressing. I don't really like making depressing videos. I really wasn't going to release this until now. Because my mom was like, hey, are you, are you going to make a video about what like what happened? I was like, I never had that in mind, but I'll, I'll do it. So I finally get, got around to doing it, and here's this video. So, but thank you guys so much for watching. And oh, and one more thing before I end the video, thank you for getting the Catholic pri Catholic priest versus Zit to a to a thousand views, over a thousand views. Thank you guys so much. I didn't think any of my videos could possibly reach that much, but you guys proved me wrong. Uh, thank you guys so much. And uh, yeah, with that being said. Hope you guys enjoy the video. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.